to our uh, post-event press conference here for Glory 39 Brussels. And just so you know, we will give you another opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one with anybody that's uh, up front here after we ask some questions from those that are uh, seated with us. But let me start by saying uh, how fantastic the Brussels crowd was tonight. Glory fans delivered. It seemed like the crowd got larger and louder as the night went on. We really enjoyed our return to uh, Brussels, the first time in five years since Glory 2. And we thank all of our fans in Brussels. Let me introduce who's here up front, and then we'll open it up for questions if you would like. First of all, big Jamal Ben Sadiq with his fifth consecutive heavyweight victory in the glory ring tonight. Give him a big hand, please. <laughs> and still, glory welterweight champion of the world. I'll get it right. It's Lavalois, Paris, France, Cedric Dumbe right here. <laughs> Our chief executive officer, Mr. John Franklin at the center table along with our head of talent operations, Mr. Cor Hemmers. And at the far end, Adrian is going to uh, translate, but uh, our Thai contingent, which have really, as you can tell, had a big impact on the uh, Glory roster. First of all, Siddichai uh, repeating as our champion, and now contender tournament champion, Pet Panamroong. John or Cor, if you want to start, uh, one of you just uh, overview of the night, your feelings after watching Glory 39. Well, first I want to say thank you to everyone for coming out. It's great to be in Brussels. It's uh, fantastic to um, come back to Europe after a couple of fights in America. We were in LA, we came, to, went to Chicago, had a sold out show in Chicago, so that was phenomenal. And then uh, great welcome here back to Europe in Brussels. So uh, thank you guys all for coming out and um, Especially thank you to the fighters. Great fights tonight. Uh, Cedric, what a fantastic performance. Um, and love the attitude and, you know, the big smile on your face made all the rest of us smile for sure. <laughs> and, Cor, the matchmaking just seems yeah. to get stronger and stronger as we grow uh, with glory. Yeah, of course. And uh, uh, I'm happy that, uh, that they all uh, performed well, you know, and it... Uh, uh, I don't know if everybody knows, but we are now doing 18 events uh, per year. So it's uh, quite a puzzle to have uh, all good fights on the card, you know. And uh, this card was also uh, influencing uh, the cards that are coming up from uh, the Netherlands, from Copenhagen, from Paris. So they did well uh, and a great job. And uh, uh, next week, we with Talent Operations, we're going to puzzle for the next fights, who are going to be the next challengers. So, but in general, uh, we saw a great evening and, and uh, yeah, great performance. Good champions. Uh, I think our company can be proud on champions like this. Indeed. I know we aren't making any announcements tonight, but our growth into Asia is coming soon. And tonight, uh, Glory 39 was seen for the first time on all of the uh, Lay Sports. Uh, broadcast entities in China, which is a big, big moment for us. And, of course, uh, Ching Hao Meng was the first of the Chinese athletes to ever step inside the ropes, and we've signed three of them that I know about, right? Uh, we signed uh, four, four Chinese talents, and uh, the first one uh, made his debut uh, tonight. And uh, uh, beside of signing uh, these new Chinese talents, we're also going to provide them uh, uh, a training camp, you know, because most of those guys coming out of the Sanda system and they really have to transfer to the uh, to the kickboxing. Same actually uh, is uh, the situation with a lot of uh, people coming from Muay Thai, the fights coming out of the Muay Thai. I think also our friend uh, winning the contender did a great job because it's uh, for them tough coming out of a five round system uh, Muay Thai to go into a three round system uh, kickboxing. But they did a great job and uh, that's same goes for the Chinese. We will help them to develop the kickboxing uh, skills, you know, so I, uh, I'm looking forward to a great future for our Chinese uh, talent. And of course, China is a big market and we are happy to go over there. Glory Kickboxing, of course, the premier kickboxing organization in the world and helping to push kickboxing to where it really deserves to be at the top of the combat sports world all over the world with athletes now representing every continent, John. Yeah, I'll make one more point, too, about China. So for the first time tonight, we were live on Lit TV in China, all over China. So big market and live television, so great to see. In addition to that, um, we've got a couple of new TV deals. Um, we're gonna start up in Spain, so we can announce that one's coming up. And uh, when My Sports opens up in Switzerland, we'll be on in Switzerland. 
So we've got a, a couple of new territories. And then here in Belgium, we were on Channel 10 and Channel 40, two sports channels in Belgium. So we've, we've stepped up to uh, a few more TV deals here in Europe as well. It's exciting to see the growth and to be sort of grabbing this tiger by the tail right now. We're going to open it up. If anyone has questions of anyone up front, we're happy to bring you a microphone. Yep. Grab this one right here. Hi, everybody. This is Suhari, Combat Point. Uh, thank you for, again uh, for a wonderful fight night. Um, the first question, uh, obviously, is uh, the missing fight on the roster. Uh, Chai Luz Pari, uh, we saw the moment uh, that Hesse Gerges uh, entered the ring. Uh, what was the official statement of uh, Chai Luz Pari that he didn't fight? Originally, Chai was not feeling well this morning, and uh, he wasn't going to fight, and then he changed his mind, and he was going to fight. And then in the back, he was having some problems with his equipment and some problems with uh, other equipment. And ultimately, as things got delayed, he decided not to fight. So if he's not ready to fight, we're not going to push him into the ring. All right. And uh, overall, uh, you're very pleased about uh, the night. Uh, a whole lot of uh, uh, people uh, viewed uh, this, uh, this fight. Uh, do you already have uh, uh, numbers of uh, people viewing uh, this event? We'll, we'll have the ratings this week. We don't get them immediately. It's a uh, you know, little technical time between uh, where, where we are tonight and what we'll see this week. But um, you know, I'm sure it's, it's going to be good. We had a great night of fights, and we got new networks. And once again, we're all over the world. So it's all good. It's also important to note that in the U.S., we're live on the uh, digital platform of ESPN, ESPN3, but it will air tomorrow night in prime time on ESPN2. So it does take a couple of days for those numbers to come through. And um, uh, are there also going to be uh, Chinese events uh, uh, to be uh, organized uh, uh, in the future? Yeah, the plan is to launch uh, a glory event in October uh, this year. And uh, I think uh, there will be a next one in, the, in December. But uh, to confirm, to be confirmed, you know, and the glory will make official announcement. That, but that's the plan that we will uh, we'll approach China this year for sure. That's also why we're scouting Chinese talent, of course. Yeah. Last question uh, of for both uh, you, John, and uh, and Cor. Uh, what was your uh, favorite fight of the night? <laughs> no, they were both well, fight, my, both my, fighting my, for the my microphone. My favorite <laughs> fight was uh, the last fight. I mean, it was a great fight, back and forth both ways. But to see Cedric Dumbe smiling, you know, made me smile. It made everyone in the crowd smile. And uh, you know, it was a great fight. You can't take anything away from Congolo. But at the end of the day, it was a fun fight and, you know, just a pleasure to watch for me. Well, yeah, uh, what can I say, John? Uh, I think also for me, it was the favorite fight was the last fight. Although I, uh, I'm also proud on, uh, on our uh, Thai fighters, you know, because, you know, I'm coming from uh, history and the source uh, for me was the Muay Thai. And I'm happy that uh, the, the, the people and the fighters from Thailand now are coming up and even we still have an undefeated uh, uh, champion. And uh, we have a new guy, a challenger coming up for uh, the title to, uh, to challenge uh, Robin van Roosmalen. So I'm also happy about what I saw from the Thai uh, side. But uh, yeah, favorite fight of the night for me. Uh, how can I uh, deny you know, this was uh, Cedric versus uh, Johan Konglo. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Questions? Just raise your hand, we'll bring you a microphone. Okay. Uh, Jamal, um, you ha already have a KO win over Rico, uh, but that was years ago. Um, how confident are you that you can come back and do that again? Uh, look, uh, uh, I beat them once. Uh, okay, it was, uh, I think, uh, four years ago. But uh, in these in this, uh, four years, uh, I didn't stop training, I didn't stop uh, reaching my goals. So uh, I'm very confident that I repeat this in the, in a few months. Anyone else with questions right here? Question for Dumbe. Um, the last in the in your la first uh, in your title win um, against Nikki Holska, and you said the the, the trash talk. Uh, really played a part in this fight. In the fight, um, uh, did it play a big part in this fight as well? Oh, of course, <laughs> everybody saw that uh, 
uh, during the waiting. Um, first, I want to apologize if um, somebody uh, thought that it was uh, irrespectable or something like that, because uh, I have a lot of respect for my opponent, and that, that was just the show for people. So, uh, of course, I get in his, his mind because he was very angry. He want he, he, he want to kill me, you know. Everybody saw that in the ring, but uh, he, he can't. He can't because I'm so fast for him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yes, of course, trash talking helped me uh, a lot. It seemed uh, as the fight uh, progressed, you were uh, taunting him more and more and more. Um, did it, was that because you were confident that you won the previous rounds? Uh, yes, because uh, I have a good team, uh, and uh, each each round they told me this round for you, this round for you. Keep hands up, keep uh, kicking his legs, so they make me confident for for the next uh, the next uh, round. Thank you. And uh, if I could, I also have a question for Shiri Chai. Uh, you've made another title defense, uh, another dominant win. Um, do you think there are any challenges left uh, currently for your title? Can you repeat the question, please? Uh, do you think there are any title challenges left that you have not beat yet? He said that um, anyone who's willing, he's willing to fight anyone and uh, he's not scared of anyone in the weight division at all. Uh, is there, do you have a, a, sp a special eye out for, sh or for a special someone at the moment who wants someone who's on a streak or someone uh, you were impressed with? He said anyone, anyone who's ready, and he'll fight them, no problem. Thank you. Right back here. Um, an extension of that question to Kaur regarding Sirichai. Who is, uh, who's left for him to fight? Well, I think we, uh, we're going to organize a uh, new contender again, and out of that uh, will be a new challenger or an, another, uh, yeah, we have to look, you know, and uh, I have to see who is in the top three of the rankings. We always have the choice to take one of the top three fighters or the contender winner. So we're going to sit down together and uh, make a, a good contender. We have some new talent coming up. We are still scouting, you know, and uh, I see that the new talent that we scout is performing well. You saw what happened. Uh, I was also surprised by the Russian guy, by the way, because I know uh, our Thai uh, winner is a very good and a great uh, talentful fighter. The Russian did well. So, and the same uh, goes for the uh, for the 70 kilo division. We have new guys coming up. We still have uh, great talent uh, in the top uh, four. So uh, we will do a contender and then we're going to decide who is the next challenger. Thanks. And um, I also wanted to get your thoughts on Cedric, Cedric Dumbay, his, his, everything about him, his performance, his personality. Like I look at the UFC and I see, you know, Conor McGregor, the way this guy moves and the way he's like trolling people and the things he says. And I look at Cedric and I think this is like Cedric McGregor in kickboxing, you know. Well, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, well, I think he did a great performance. And I also, if you if if you read my uh, match breaking uh, breakdown uh, uh, commentary and uh, comment, then I uh, was predicting actually uh, Congo is a great fighter, very strong, explosive. But he, I think he get a little bit frustrated by the the way uh, Cedric uh, approached the fight, you know, with his talk, with his performance. And then you get a situation that he is moving and uh, he's moving very well. He throws his, his punches, his knees, and uh, Johan Kongling gets irritated. He's going to hunt for him, and that's difficult from somebody who is moving, you know. That's also a little bit what we saw with the Ben Sadek fight. I mean, the guy is also moving a lot, uh, the Brazilian. And then if you're going to hunt what has he, for example, did, then it's difficult. And I think in this situation, Conglo really wanted to uh, knock him out and start hunting for him instead of really locking him and uh, cutting the angles. And I think yeah, that that's a great job from... Uh, beside of that, it's a great kickboxer with all all round skilled talent. He also uh, can irritate his opponent. And uh, yeah, he was in the trap. Uh, uh, if you compare me 
to Conor McGregor. Maybe I can get the same money as Conor McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I gave you guys a great suitcase, but it was for the belt, you know. But you know, we, we're gonna see. We're gonna see what happens. Since we sell out a few few big stadiums, a few million pay-per-views, and you're right there, man. <laughs> Uh, my question goes to Cedric. You said it would be an easy fight, even though you had already lost twice before. How come? How come you're so confident this time? So we can repeat, please. I have to read your lips, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you said it would be an easy fight. Yeah. Even though you'd already lost twice before to Congo. How come you're so confident this time? Oh. Uh, because uh, how I told uh, I told to the interview before, Congolo was better for me. Huh? For me, in my opinion, Congolo was better before when I fought him uh, first, the first time. And uh, after that, uh, he's still going in boxing. And I think for me, it's not good when you you are in uh, in glory to keep uh, uh, boxing out of uh, the glory organization uh, because kickboxing is very difficult to. To to fight, uh, so that's that's what I uh, I told that uh, I'm better than him, and uh, I change. I, I still grew up. That's why I think I told that uh, this fight is gonna be easy for me because Congolo is a boxer. It's not a kickboxer uh, anymore. So that's why. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions? All right, with that, we will, uh, again, give you the opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one if you would like with any of these uh, people that are at the front tables. But let me just remind you that we continue on the road. Glory next. Uh, Glory, of course, Glory 40 is going to be happening in Copenhagen next month. That will be followed by another trip to the Netherlands and Den Bosch in uh, May. June is uh, Paris, and there are some other surprises coming, and we'll be making those announcements sometime soon. But thank you again to Copenhagen for all, uh, or to uh, Brussels for all of your support tonight at Glory 39. Thank you for attending our press conference, and you're free to ask questions if you would like.